Capitol Police Accountability Board. Findings from an investigation just released regarding the board's embattled executive director, Connor Dwyer Reynolds. We have team coverage tonight. Carla Rogner spoke to Dwyer Reynolds within the last hour. We'll hear from her. We're going to begin, though, with Dalton Williams with more on exactly what is in that report. Yes, the internal probe into the suspended Police Accountability Board's executive director, Connor Dwyer Reynolds, found numerous missteps that led investigators to conclude that he should be removed from the position. The investigation into the Police Accountability Board first began back in May, after the board suspended executive director, Connor Dwyer Reynolds, made allegations of sexual harassment and retaliation against former board chair, Shawnee Wilson. For the next five months, investigators interviewed 39 witnesses and reviewed thousands of documents, including the work emails of Dwyer Reynolds and Wilson. According to the report, investigators concluded that while witnesses attested to a mutual romantic interest between Wilson and Dwyer Reynolds, his claims of sexual harassment and retaliation were not substantiated. The report said that there was evidence that Wilson expressed her belief that Dwyer Reynolds should be removed from the leadership. However, she had no role in the vote to remove him. Allegations of retaliation and creating a hostile work environment made against Dwyer Reynolds by some staffers also could not be substantiated. According to the report, Dwyer Reynolds forwarded confidential information to a member of the media and a non-city employee on at least eight separate occasions. Investigators recommend that Dwyer Reynolds be removed from his position and PAB leadership hire a consultant to provide guidance and direction. We've posted the full report online, 13wham.com. Don. All right, hey, thank you. Now, while investigators recommend that Connor Dwyer Reynolds be fired, he says, and told our Carla Rogner, who's expected to be reinstated as the executive director. Carla, joining us now to tell us more about that, that he, what, says he feels he did nothing wrong. Yeah, Don, that's right. He maintains that he did nothing wrong and told me he feels vindicated by the findings of the report. He actually denies the investigation's findings that he violated policy by sharing confidential information and said his only intentions were to be transparent. And now he just wants to get back to business at the PAB. You know, I've been waiting for six months to find out if someone's accused me of doing something monstrous or really wrong and to have it be giving someone maybe too much time off and sharing information with reporters, that's validating. It's really validating. You know, I, I came into this job telling people I would be the most transparent person in city government. To be punished for that would be deeply ironic. And now it's up to the PAB board to decide whether Connor gets his job back. Connor plans to meet with the board members here at their offices tomorrow night to answer their questions about this investigation. We'll have more from his interview in our newscast coming up at 10 and 11. The city's independent investigation into Rochester's Police Accountability Board is complete. It comes six months after the executive director, Connor Dwyer Reynolds, was suspended over staff complaints about his leadership. The report is critical of the inner workings at the PAB, which has a $5 million budget to investigate allegations of police misconduct. It also recommends Dwyer Reynolds be fired, but he says he still wants his job back. Connor Dwyer Reynolds says after reviewing the results of the investigation that recommends his termination, he is ready to get back to work at the PAB. Oh, I feel really vindicated. You know, um, my story has always been that I spoke up about sexual harassment. Afterwards, there were a bunch of baseless complaints filed against me um, and I was suspended wrongly. And this report validates that. In May, Dwyer Reynolds said he was being sexually harassed by his boss, former PAB chair Shawnee Wilson. The report did not find there was proof of sexual harassment, but describes Wilson's behavior toward him as wholly improper. The investigation also found no proof of claims that Dwyer Reynolds had discriminated or retaliated against his employees. But investigators hired by the city to look into the PAB say he did violate several city policies and that bringing him back to the PAB 
would jeopardize its mission. The investigation also found multiple instances in which Dwyer Reynolds shared confidential information with reporters. But Dwyer Reynolds denies he violated policy and says his intentions were to be transparent about possible misconduct in the city. I've never released the portions of police officer disciplinary records that have to be kept confidential by law. I've never done that. I have never released information that by law has to be kept confidential. I have released information that the city does not want released from a policy perspective. Um, and so for the city to punish me for that and for, for this community to allow me to be punished for that, I think that will sound the death of the PAB. The investigation also references the hiring of a new attorney for the PAB, a hire vetted by the city. When it was discovered she had not even taken the bar exam, Dwyer Reynolds gave her time off to do so. Investigators say that was a nonsensical decision and a misuse of city money. Um, that's not justification for terminating someone or even suspending them. It's at worst justification for retraining. PAB board members told investigators they never received training from the city on policies or code of conduct. Fixing that is among the many changes called for in the report. It's up to the PAB board now to decide how to move forward from this and make any final decisions. City Council is also planning to make its own recommendations. The board is meeting tomorrow night and Connor Dwyer Reynolds told me he plans to be there and answer their questions. Now to the growing concerns in the wake of Monday night's murder-suicide on Coastar Street in Rochester. Neighbors say one of the victim's two young sons was inside when their mom was shot and killed in the front yard. Authorities say an off-duty Greece police officer is the one who opened fire, then took her own life. This is just the latest violent encounter in the city with small children nearby. As Chase Howell explains, now crisis teams are called to those scenes to help young victims of violence. Chase? Doug, Dan, in just three days, three children lost parents to gun violence. Now they'll be missing them at the table this holiday season and for the rest of their lives. A tragic scene outside a home on Coastar Street Monday night. A woman shot and killed during a murder-suicide while her two young boys were inside. You can't erase that level of, um, of violence, that, that level of trauma. And it makes it even worse when it's a parent. And you know that there is very little that you can do because you probably are not even old enough to be able to get up and unlock the door. Friday night on Norton Street, Rochester police say a 27-year-old was shot to death in the passenger seat of a car. In the back, two children, seven and eight years old. RPD chief David Smith says when it comes to children involved in violent crimes, they call in outside agencies for help. We have many different partner agencies. Um, obviously, our first go-to is the PIC team. Um, and oftentimes they then reach out to other agencies for us on our behalf. Aliyah Henton Williams is part of the city's crisis intervention team. She says when incidents involve children, they encourage families to get counseling for their child and also help educate them. One of the ways that we initiate the process is by working through the Office of Victim Services who can provide families with funding for counseling and then we'll help families access it through other areas, whether it's insurance or through other types of plans that are available through some of our community partners. Beyond getting these families the help they need, Mayor Evans says the community needs to also step in and support them. What we have to do as a community is to make sure that we really wrap, wrap our loving arms around the families that are experiencing the, the, these situations. For those seeking help, you can call the city's community support team or the homicide response team. Both numbers are on our website at 13wham.com.